be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O light from light, true God from true God, on this day make us worthy to meditate on the miracle when you open the eyes of the blind man on the road to Jericho. In your compassion, open our eyes so that we may know you and follow you. With the children of light, we praise and we thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and your children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Holy Trinity, the one true God, the Father of the eternal light, the Son who is light from light, and the Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son. One power, one authority, and one exalted God. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. Only begotten word of God, born in time of the Virgin Mary, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You chose to open the eyes of the blind to teach us that you are the source and the giver of all light. By your miracles you prove that you are the awaited Messiah of whom Isaiah spoke. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. O Lord, who has given us light, accept our witness and our profession of faith that you are truly the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Now we implore you with the fragrance of this incense to let the light of your knowledge shine within our hearts. May we see your face and rejoice, as did Bartimaeus on the road to Jericho. And may your light shine throughout the world, so that all may see your face and rejoice in you. We raise glory to you, to the Father who sent you, and to the Spirit, the source of all holiness forever.
O Christ, you are the true light who guides all people. You shine the splendor of your radiant light on the eyes of the blind. Through your grace, open our minds and our consciences to the light of your gospel. Accept the fragrance of our incense and our repentance, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Kaddishat Aloha Kaddishat Ayatollah Kaddishat Lohoyotoh Ishramayim Kaddishat and nations what the blind man said to Christ all on earth be attentive let me now behold your face from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, now I myself, Paul, urge you through the gentleness and clemency of Christ I who am humble when face to face with you, but brave toward you when absent. I beg you that, when present, I may not have to be brave with that confidence, confidence with which I intend to act boldly against some who consider us as acting according to the flesh. For, although we are in the flesh, we do not battle according to the flesh. For the weapons of our battle are not of flesh, but are enormously powerful, capable of destroying fortresses. We destroy arguments and every pretension, raising itself against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive in obedience to Christ. And we are ready to punish every disobedience once your obedience is complete. Look at what confronts you. Whoever is confident of belonging to Christ should consider that he belongs to Christ. So do we. Praise be to God always.
Okay, il y avait ça. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Shlomo elo kolokhuna From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Mark who proclaimed life unto the world let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls The evangelist Mark writes, And they came to Jericho. And as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. And upon hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, Son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. And Jesus stopped and he said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up. He is calling you. And he threw aside his cloak, and he sprang up, and he came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him in reply, What is it that, we, that you wish me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, that I may see. And Jesus told him, Go on your way. Your faith has saved you. And immediately he received his sight, and he followed him on the way. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, Lord. And immediately he received his sight, and he followed him on the way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This is the last of the miracles recorded by St. Mark, chapter 10. Sight. And you'll notice the way that he phrases. Remember that the Gospel of St. Mark is St. Peter's catechesis. It's his teaching that eventually is written down. And so the terminology which is used is also important. This man receives his sight outside of Jericho. And remember always that Jericho is the world. Jericho is the coast. Jericho is the fine things in life. Jericho is the expensive five-star Michelin restaurants. The Jericho is that world. And it's when our Lord is leaving that world that you have the blind beggar who receives his sight and is able to see. Notice in our prayers in the Husoyo, the, the amount of times it says, and in the Masmuro, that this sight is to see the face of God. This sight is to see the face of Christ. And it's why in this terminology, that when our Lord tells him, go your way, go your way, individually, go your way, your faith has made you whole, has given you, has healed you. We are told that he receives his sight immediately and follows our Lord on the way. 
And the way, of course, is the terminology. You see it in the Acts of the Apostles. It's the first terminology. What do you call the coming of the Messiah, the fulfillment of the old law of Moses? So this becomes the path. This is the way that the Messiah has established for it. Later on, we call it Christianity, we call it Catholicism, we call it the path of the gospel. But its original terminology is the way. We're told very clearly this man is the paradigm of Christian conversion. The ability to be able to see. This is an enormous thing. We forget what the gospel does to the human spirit. When an individual does not see, everything you say to them about the gospel is gibberish. Which is why our Lord says, you do not cast pearls before swine. He's not calling people pigs. But he's saying, as the, the, the swine will never appreciate the beauty of the pearls. So don't even bother trying to put them out there. They're not going to be impressed. We've all had that experience talking to some non-Christian. They have just no idea what you're even talking about. Their conversion has to come through seeing your life transformed, not by what you say. That is the following on the way. And so the church puts this miracle on the last Sunday before we enter into Great Week. This is Hosanna Week. But the Great Week with Palm Sunday next week, because reminding us of our conversion. Friday will be the temptation of our Lord in the wilderness. It indicates the 40th day of the fast. The weekend shifts. The weekend shifts to the celebration with the children. On Lazarus Saturday, They'll do their little skit downstairs and have a celebration. Everyone's invited to come. It's not just because it's a children's celebration. It's not just about kids. And we're trying to resurrect what FIFA talks about affectionately of when she was a child. Everybody knows her age, so it doesn't matter. Late 20s, early 30s, all right. The, The skits that were put on by the children are the raising of Lazarus. And in those days, of course, you had to do it in Arabic because nobody spoke, well, they spoke English, but Arabic was their first tongue. And so the scroll that would be opened out that was written for the children, all in phonetics of the, of the story, and they would just read the phonetics of the rising of Lazarus. And then after that was done, everyone brought out sweets for the kids. And then you went to the next block and you did it again. We don't have a neighborhood, so we'll do it once downstairs and then you can enjoy the sweets. On, because on Sunday and Lazarus, on, excuse, Lazarus Saturday and then Hosanna Sunday, next Sunday, it is also all about the children. In the Syriac tradition, this weekend is the biggest weekend of the entire year. And because human nature doesn't change, and we all know the people who only go to Mass on Christmas, so in the Syrian tradition, people who never go to Mass ever will go on Palm Sunday. They won't go for the Easter, they don't go for resurrection, but they'll be there on Palm Sunday. And as I've often mentioned to you, it's why the bombs went off in Egypt 10 years ago on Palm Sunday, because the Muslims knew that was the biggest day of the year, and it's also when you read about the statistics why so many children died, because the churches were jammed full of children wearing their very best clothes, Because on Palm Sunday, the children will have their candles and they'll carry the palms and they have the blessings. And another celebration after that mass next week. The children will decorate the candles on Saturday morning also as part of the celebrations. But then you shift in the evening to the coming into the harbor at 6.30. Because at sundown is the beginning then of the great and holy week of the Passion. It is considered an independent and unique liturgical year, liturgical season in the Syriac calendar. So it opens with the coming into the harbor next Sunday at 6.30 in the evening. It's a prayer service. It's a prayer service with candles and entering in through the back door. Everyone leaves, goes out, and comes back in singing the psalms. And then it's a prayer service opening as we prepare ourselves now to enter into our Lord. Having commemorated the 40th day of the fast, celebrated Shanini and Hosanna Sunday, Lazarus Saturday, then we enter quite seriously into the coming into the harbor of salvation, entering into our Lord's passion. And that's it, normally, historically, all of Holy Week and all of Bright Week, Easter Week, are cleared off the calendar because we do nothing else than focus upon the Lord God. And so that entrance, 
that we enter. You have the schedule. I just wanted to bring it up this morning because I won't be able to see you before next Sunday. And so, in any formal way of sermons. And so, note the attention to the schedule. It is not a Latin schedule for Holy Week. There is a ceremony on Wednesday night. There is a ceremony on Thursday night. There are two ceremonies on Friday, and there's a ceremony in the middle, and midday on Saturday. These are the ancient ways we observe the great week of the Passion. But to say it to the person that you just meet, who binges Netflix, it's gibberish. Wednesday? Why would I go out Wednesday night? I don't do that. We need to be able to see. And that's why the healing of the blind man, Timai, son of Timai, Timai Bar Timai, Bar Timaius, is, becomes the image then of the conversion. Do you remember the beauty about conversion is it's not about the past. The beauty of conversion is we see so that we see the future. It is something that necessarily brings hope. We live in a very hopeless and despairing world because of the loss of faith. I don't mean faith in the sense of pious feelings, but of true conviction that there is a life that is better for us, that God desires for us to move forward. That is the notion of conversion, of turning towards the Lord. And that turning towards the Lord is an individual thing that can only happen by grace, only by a gift. So you notice that what takes place here is Timaeus already has faith. He's addressing our Lord in messianic terms, son of David. This man already believes that this is more than just a rabbi. This is more than even just miracles of being able to see. This man already has faith that this is the Messiah. That is already the beginning of the conversion. That when I see that reality that God is at work in this world, in my life, even in my blindness and my begging, my miserable little life that I have, even in that God himself is personally working, that is what instills faith. Because I know my life can be better than it is. I know my life can be different than it is. That is a vision of future. That is a vision of hope. Whenever an individual turns inward and becomes nostalgic about the past and remains fixated there, they always die. Remember that for the ancient classical world, nostalgia, homesickness, was not considered something good. It was actually considered on occasion even a lethal condition medically. And on the level of grace and the supernatural life, that makes perfect sense. If I'm only fixated in the past, trying to always recover something from the past, I am necessarily shackled on going forward. And what will my life look like when I follow on the way? I don't know, because I'm not God. But all I know is that it will be better than what it has been. Even if it's in pain and struggling and carrying the cross, it will be better because it will have come from the infinite God who is charity, who is infinite wisdom. And in that reality, I know that this will be better. If Timaeus had said, you know, I have a pretty good gig here begging. People, the same people bring me stuff. They bring me things each day and I've got a life. If he had fixated on that, because clearly he hadn't died at this point, if he had fixated and said, well, I've got a routine worked out here, this is okay, and then just stayed there, he would never have been healed of his blindness. So he has faith in this man working, who is more than just man, son of David. And when the obstacles come and people tell him to shut up, what does he do? He makes greater acts of faith and shouts even louder, son of David, have mercy on me. That is what faith does for us. We plow through the obstacles and all of the roadblocks of this world. This world cannot shackle us down if we allow grace to work in our lives. And that is why he shouts. And then that moment, in that circumstance, in that condition when our Lord says, get up and bring him here, you notice that what Timai does is we're told that he, he throws off, first of all, he throws off his garment. 
He throws off the old things of being the beggar sitting outside of Jericho. He throws it off and we're told he springs up to go to our Lord. This is grace that's at work within us, brings him faith. Grace calls us to the next stage and we throw off these things that we just simply become accustomed to and come before our Lord. And our Lord knows exactly what he wants, but he asks him, what do you need? What is it you want me to do for you? Our Lord knows exactly what he wants him to do for him. But he says, Rabbi, teacher, that I may see. Teach me. Bring me deeper. Let me understand that I may see. This is why we pray. Our Lord knows exactly what we need in our lives. He knows exactly what we need in our lives better than we do. But we pray because it is that continual partnership and reciprocity. This is why when we just become fixated in the past and the way things were and the way things are in my life and all of this, we die because our parameters and our way of judging is in the past. But what does our Lord say to him that I may see? That ability to see then is what opens up and allows him then to follow our Lord on the way. It is a beautiful episode. And when I keep talking about the past, it's because the episode just before this in Jericho is James and John coming. We want stuff. You know, we've been here. We've been here for three years. We think, you know, there should be some perks here. We want, my brother and I, we want to be on your right hand and your left hand in the kingdom. You give us the top post. We're here from the beginning. They want stuff and they're thinking about the past. And of course, all the other apostles become upset. And our Lord says, this isn't for me to give to you, but to drink of my chalice, to be baptized in my baptism, these things will be given to you. That is what has just been discussed to correct James and John, and then the episode of Timai. And what takes place immediately after and following upon the way is Palm Sunday. Chapter 11 of St. Mark is Palm Sunday. So our Lord doesn't promise roses and excitement and good, nice, sweet, tingly feelings. You follow me on the way, come with me to Jerusalem. Let's begin the path of crucifixion and betrayal and stabbing in the back. That is the path that the Christian has to embrace. Nothing less. The idea of portraying the gospel as being some kind of big air mattress is just not true. Timai, who is given the sight, who follows our Lord, follows him straight into the crucifixion the following week. And so this is an important lesson for us and why this day is chosen here. And as a last moment of understanding future, well, I told you about Lazarus Saturday and Palm Sunday. There is conversion not only of the individual, but there is also conversion of community. This is why the Western world changed. The individuals changed within the Roman Empire, and then the Roman Empire changed. You have conversion of the individual and conversion of the community. God has blessed us with children, and we have babies being born this spring and this summer. These, we cannot thank God enough for life being given among us. And for that reason, it's important to understand there's not only conversion of the individual, there's conversion of community. Our future is not just our individual lives walking along the way. Our future is also our children and how we educate them and how we teach them and how we discipline teaching them and leading them towards the Lord and giving them a foundation so that this community will be here in another hundred years while we are in the grave. That passing on is conversion of the community. Passing on because we see the future. We see the potential that when the light of God is given and we see not only as individuals, but as we see as community, then we have a great hope because it leads us along the way to a future. And so this day has both not only an individual aspect of my, of your, of our individual conversion, but it is also understanding that what our Lord is asking of our parish, of our community, of Waterville, what is it that you wish me to do? Let us see. 
and send us life so that we may follow on the way and that the way will continue long after my death. That is conversion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, O compassionate and merciful one. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
We thank you, O Father, for this gift that you have given us, though we are unworthy. Do not shame us because of our sins, but help and save us, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo illa Lord Jesus, stretch forth your right hand and bless your people. Protect them by your holy cross and be their shelter and refuge, and perfect them with your abundant blessings, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your blessed Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So a hearty thank you to all the good souls who were here cleaning yesterday. It was phenomenal. You did not only the inside, but also the outside, raking gardens, which was not part of the deal, which was terrific. It is phenomenal, not just on the level of the buckets of dirt that were taken out of the carpet, which the sacristan happily told me this morning, for all the cleaning. But what is most beautiful is to see your collaboration, your unity, and your working together for not only the spiritual good, but also even the physical good of this blessed parish. May God reward you a thousand times older, over for your generosity. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Leave you.